Where's your position of advantage? For me, my best position of advantage is at the top of the stairs. So why would I give that up for a less uh, desirable position just so now somebody can make it through my house a little bit further, right? Yeah. right. They've had the warning. They've had plenty of opportunities to leave. This is my best position of advantage. I'm not going to leave this position. This is where I'm going to make my stand here. He's not coming up those stairs. Hey, folks, we got some really great episodes and videos coming up for you here as part of this pod venture. Honestly, some of my personal favorite content we have ever produced. Really great stuff. Before we do that, there's a couple disclaimers. First off, just a little one we'll throw out. This has been done over the course of 2020, which, as we know, there's been shutdowns all over the place. It feels like an eternity. If you hear anything that's uh, somewhat repetitive over the course of these episodes or you see any odd inconsistencies, it's just because there was so much of a gap between each of the videos and podcasts that we shot. So keep that in mind. Now, the other thing is, of course, being that we're going to be discussing the topics of self-defense, home defense, other things of that nature, we're talking about some pretty serious stuff that if you find yourself, which we hope you never do, in the worst case scenario, uh, it can have some pretty big legal or emotional ramifications and other consequences depending on how you act and what you do. Now, we are all in different areas with different laws, and also we are not, Mark and I, nor anybody at the Vortex Edge Academy here that we have, that we trained at, uh, professional lawyers. So don't take anything said in these podcasts or videos as 100% factual law. It will vary, and our own interpretations of laws and things like that may, and the way we word them, may not be perfect. So do not take them as instructions for how to handle a situation you may find yourself in. These episodes were created with the intention of giving our listeners great food for thought and a prepared mindset to be ready for anything, not to be legal advice or material to reference in any sort of legal situation. Should you wish to practice some of the things we've done here, please exercise extreme caution, as always, with firearms or physical training, and we highly suggest seeking professional training in a professional facility uh, like Vortex Edge right here at our facility in Barneville, Wisconsin. And surely there's going to be more news on just what that is and how to sign up for things like that coming in due time. So now that i got to kind of the uh, cover our own you-know-what out of the way, Enjoy the videos and podcasts here. Let us know what you think in the comments on the YouTube videos or on Instagram. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, we're back with Adrian and Pete from Vortex Edge, across the table from Mark and I. And uh, this is kind of the culmination of our, oh, training for real life style scenarios. Um, and, uh, this isn't to say that we've done every form of training that anyone could ever do for real life scenarios, because I think as we all know, real life, um, there's no parameters by which it goes by or rules by which it follows things just sort of happen, but you can do the best you can to try and be prepared, um, for a multitude of things. And so Mark, you and I, uh, got done with, uh, Adrian and Pete here in yeah. the shoot house area of the range. Now up, yeah, two. Jim, you uh, you shot me. Well, you shot me too. Well, so, fair enough. Um, <laughs> that's how that works. <laughs> Prior to this, <laughs> we'd done a little bit of marksmanship with you know pistols, and we discussed a number of different things regarding it, mostly concealed carry and defensive use of pistols, but also just how important it is to understand shooting a pistol. And, and it's not enough to really just kind of just get one, which I'm sure we'll get into a lot here as well. Uh, we went over carbines as well. We shot with uh, Pete and Justin. Uh, and then we had Kyle McNally up, and he showed us a little bit of some kind of like mixed martial arts, jujitsu. It's sort of just practical martial arts, I would call it, because it seemed like it was a mixture of a number of yep. different things and even some wrestling stuff. I mean, there was a lot thrown in there. But today, talk about a, uh, a bit of a hot topic these days in at the time of this recording, you know, mid-2020 or so. Um, home defense was our key focus. We wanted to kind of put into practice a lot of what we had learned and actually have some real life scenarios where we're moving around, we're coming in and out of doors and uh, we're moving throughout a simulated house or building structure. The shoot house isn't a perfect example of a house, uh, but it does allow you to practice a lot of tactical movements. Uh, And then also, you know, being inside of a room and barricading yourself in and and all these things. So anyway, I won't 
talk too much now because we gotta we gotta get into the pros that are across the table and pick their brains on some stuff. But that's kind of what we've gone into. There will be some video footage of us doing that. Uh, it was very enlightening, I feel, to actually now put some of what we've learned into practice and see it all unfold in front of our eyes. So, what do you guys think is the best way to start? I felt like one of the when we went into this, I had these grandiose ideas in my head of we'd be clearing rooms and looking like badasses and busting in doors and checking corners and all that kind of stuff because I figured, you know, that's what I've seen in TV shows and movies and it sounds fun. Yeah, we still haven't done a ninja kick, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, for the record. That'll be next episode. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> And then, Adrian, you brought up, well, that really wouldn't be a great service to anyone listening. It's really not even great advice to give people to be teaching them how to just go and be clearing rooms in their house and going around like G.I. Joe. Yeah. Um, but why is that? Why did we do that? Well, you or know, did not do that. We, we talked a little bit about it in one of the previous podcasts, and that's identifying what our mission is, right? And our mission when we're at home is to protect ourselves, protect our family, right? So... What's the best way for us to do that? And when we're looking at a, a home invasion or a burglary type situation, um, the advantage is going to lie with the person who uh, is in one place who can barricade and uh, control uh, access to one entry point um, and, uh, and, and stay fixed there versus somebody who's wandering around the house searching for somebody. Um, I think a lot of people may have an idea that it's my house, it's I know the floor plan, I know the layout, I have home field advantage, so therefore I go hunting, uh, looking throughout my house for the bad guy, and uh, and that's really not the case. And um, I don't know, I mean, Pete, maybe with your background, you can speak to it a little bit more, but when we look at even um, things, there's a reason why overseas uh, urban combat uh is is so violent and and so deadly um it's it's difficult going into somebody's house um and and fighting in it uh even if you're you know part of the most some of the most elite military units in the world the advantage lies with the person who's barricaded who you know is stationary and is is essentially able to set up an ambush um you know when someone's uh going into their house so it, it doesn't accomplish your mission it doesn't help uh, protect your family if you leave them there in the bedroom and then go start wandering your house looking for the bad guy who's wandered mm -hmm. in. When when we were kind of in some of those simulated scenarios, you could really see that and identify that like immediately. Like if I left this position to go do something else, I've left myself or I'm making myself vulnerable and I've left my family vulnerable at the same time. Like and you've potentially put a bad guy between you and your family, which then presents a whole new set of issues because if something happens where you need to, or you would otherwise need to fire around, well, now your family's on the backside yep. or they're closer to your family than you are. And there's, yeah. I feel like you've, you've lost a lot of control in that situation at that point. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I mean, really, the, the only reason to move, right, is to improve your position, to, sure. to, to get my family, right, to get myself to a better position where I'm safer, my family's safer, right, if somebody's, yeah, between you and your family, or you have to go down the hallway to get your kids, uh, something like that, yeah, there are reasons to move, but going through your house and clearing your house, uh, it's not a good idea. CQB is a team sport, mm -hmm. okay, you can't, you can't really do it solo very effectively, so, yeah, Prioritize, prioritize what's important to you guys, and that should be your family, okay? there's If you have your family barricaded in your bedroom, there's nothing downstairs that's worth dying for, nothing. It's true. Yeah. It really is true. I mean, if you think about it, one thing I know I hear a lot of people say, I mean, I've heard a lot of people say it in times like this where you see, you know, I mean, unfortunately, businesses caught on fire and stuff like that. You hear people say, well, you know, they've got insurance. That, that'll that kind of fix it. Um, we won't get into the business burning and stuff like that. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, so we have homeowners insurance. Sure. What does that cover? Does most homeowners insurances and stuff cover burglaries, for example? So if I'm if I'm every time I picture in my head somebody downstairs rooting around in all of our stuff, I mean it just conjures up that like you grit your teeth and you think like they shouldn't be doing that. Like they're in my house, this is my space. Yeah. And you want to get down there. But I mean to your point, Pete, nothing down there is worth dying over. And then also 
I'm pretty certain that if if that happens, there is some sort of a way to at least get it back. Well, yeah. I you kind of brought up a good point. Like there's sometimes you have to set ego aside. Right. You know, hey, somebody's in my house. You know, what what the hell, man? You know, somebody they how dare they do that? And you have to literally list your priorities. And like as long as your family is safe, just you have to set ego aside. Let you know, call the police, let them do what they need to do, but you have to be in a position where you can best defend your family, what's important to you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and and that just means, you know, admit it that you're letting people into your house, letting them do what they want. I mean, not really, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you within know. reason. Yeah. I mean, so th yeah, you didn't, nowhere... you didn't open the door for him, but right? You're, you're right. sort of allowing it to occur once it has unfortunately begun, right? Nowhere in this country can you use deadly force to protect property, right? So mm -hmm. you have insurance for it. Maybe you don't have insurance for it, but at the end of the day, um, whatever your property loss is going to be, if they steal your TV or your computer or your, you know, your uh, gold bullion, whatever you may have stashed in your house, okay? <laughs> um, at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot cheaper than potentially facing, you know, a homicide charge or, heck, even if you're completely justified in what you do, remember, you can do everything right and still get sued, okay? Mm -hmm. And the cost to defend that can be astronomical. I, I kind of said earlier today when we were down in the shoot house, right, there's, there's no winners in a shooting or in a gunfight, there's only people who lose less. So right. even if you come out on top and you escape with your life, okay, you prevail in that fight, uh, there can be some huge financial costs. And, and, and today now with the media and the way things are yeah. uh, in public opinion, like you might do everything right and it, it could still ruin your life. It's, it's so true. And man, there's so many things that we can go into and we can maybe get into some of the there wasn't an incredible, I would say, incredible amount of tactics necessarily that we went over. We can get into some of the stuff that was just really important that you guys mentioned, even some of the safety items, which might even make some people have their eyes roll a little bit because they're thinking, oh, well, you know, we get it. There's the rules of firearm safety. And actually, in, in this case, there were some other uh, things that we brought up that were just can't be stressed enough. But We'll get into that a bit, but talking about more the, I mean, you brought up the legal aspect of it, getting yourself in a lawsuit, the thought that somebody can break into your home and be doing something that is, you know, I mean, you know, they're stealing stuff or they're just, they're just in your house uninvited that, and they forcibly broke in or whatever it was, the fact that they can do that and you can still end up in big trouble if you're trying to defend that or whatever, uh, is, is such a hard thing to get your mind around. Um, yeah. But uh, but at the same time, I think, you know, one phrase that got brought up a time or two was this castle doctrine. Sure. Uh, which is, is sort of, in some people's heads, a green light to just go hot on anybody who steps foot in your house. You know, just, hey, they crossed that threshold. If I see them, they're down, you know, and that's good to go because I got castle doctrine. Um you know, or uh, or just understanding deadly force and all that stuff that you need to feel as though they're trying to bring upon you and get into that a bit. Sure. Yeah, that's tricky, yeah. though, because you think about that when somebody's just in your house uninvited at night, right? You just It's impossible to know, even if they're rooting around for stuff, it's impossible yeah. to know their intentions. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, um, Castle Doctrine, right? So... Basically, um, castle doctrine, what castle doctrine does is it removes, when you are in your house, and in some states it applies to your car, your hotel room, things like that, but mm. when you are in your house, it basically removes your duty to retreat, okay? So, okay. Um, in the state of Wisconsin, for instance, okay, if I am out and about in public and somebody is attempting to commit a forcible felony against me, okay, um, I have an obligation, if I can reasonably do so, to get myself out of that situation, okay? Mm -hmm. That means I can run away, I can drive away, I can back off, right? I can de-escalate, whatever. I have an obligation to try that. doesn't mean I, I have to, but I, it, the burden of proof is going to be on me to show that it was unreasonable for me to do so before I used deadly force. Basically, all Castle Doctrine does is it, is it basically says, look, your home is your castle. We don't expect you to try to run away or escape from your house. Like, yeah. this is your place. You're supposed to be safe. We're going to presume that 
it's not reasonable for you to retreat. So it gives some benefit of the doubt there um, to the homeowner, which I think is very reasonable. But it doesn't remove any type of requirement um, that you still have to have a reasonable fear uh, that you're in imminent threat of death or great bodily harm. That's still there. So you still have to be able to articulate those things. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's all sorts of cases where uh, homeowners have uh, um, overstepped the you know the legal uh, guidelines or the, the the legalities of of using deadly force and have gotten charged for uh, using deadly force when it wasn't reasonable to do so. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of myths about that. Same with um, uh, what do you call it? The stand your ground laws. Same thing. It just removes your duty to retreat. It it doesn't change anything else. So a lot of people think it's this green light. Oh, you know, I can just say I was in fear for my life and shoot somebody. Like not at all. Yeah. Well, and then we even got into a little bit of. Someone may think to themselves, well, I should be able to shoot anybody if they come into my house at night. And again, that, Pete, like you said, kind of goes into a bit of the ego thing and the emotional side of things because, you know, I mean, as much as it's going to piss you off if a teenage kid busts in and is trying to find your wallet, I, I try to think to myself, and, and I, you know, someone may accuse, you know, this of being soft thinking, you know, nerf or whatever, but. If there's some teenage kid who's trying to break in and just find like a hundred bucks or twenty bucks or whatever they're trying to find, do I want to shoot that kid? I mean, that kid's probably a little jerk and probably needs to be taught a lesson, you mm-hmm. know. Yep. But does a kid's life need to end? I mean, I never did anything like that when I was in high school, but I can think of dumb stuff that I did in high school, yeah. and now I don't do those dumb things. And you know, I mean, how do you? How do you? Uh, separate, you know, well, this dumb thing is, is yeah, if, if they die from doing that dumb thing, it's okay. Whereas this other dumb thing, you know, it's not worth them dying. It's, and it gets weird. And then you have to live with that for the rest of your life, you know, while well, you shot some teenager in your house and maybe they didn't even have a weapon or anything, you know, it's just, yeah. and at that point it gets, it gets out of just so much of what's law and what's written on paper and more into just, all right, let's step back for a second and just think about this, you know? Yeah, what are the ethics of it? Right. And and everybody's going to have their own determination on what they think is right or what they think is wrong. But um, the way self-defense law is in this country, I mean, it comes back from hundreds of years of common law um, that basically said, you know, if, if your life is in danger, you have the right to take someone else's to protect yours, to use deadly force. Mm. But if it's if it's just property, well, you know, then no, you don't have that right. And that's kind of where the line has been drawn, and it's been that way for a long time. Now, at the same time, I'm not going to sit in my bedroom and let someone rummage through the bottom of my house. I mean, I am going to call the police. You mm-hmm. know, we are going to make well, every yeah. effort. You know, it's not like you're sitting up there giving them carte blanche to do anything. But, right. you know, you just you have a list of priorities in your life, and your TV shouldn't be one of them, you know. I yeah. mean, um. You know, I guess something else we can talk about. I mean, this is often overlooked. Um, you know, how did that person get in your house in the first place? I mean, that's like your first line of defense. And um, it's incredibly common for people to just leave their doors unlocked, yeah. um, their garage door, first floor windows. And these are really common sense things. But, man, I, Adrian, as a police officer, how many times have you, you know, gone to <laughs> burglaries, you know, and, and, there's no evidence of forced entry because the back door was unlocked. The, major- the, garage, the majority right. of them. The, the garage majority. is open. Right. Yep. Right. Or, or, or thefts from cars. You know, 90% of the thefts from cars I went to were person left their car unlocked. Mm-hmm. You know? So well, yeah, and I'm just... not trying to blame the victim, but by taking a few basic precautions, <laughs> you make it a lot harder to become a victim. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, and right. you brought up the fact that security measures that you take are often, really, I should say, never completely impenetrable, yeah. you know? So there's nothing out there that's ever going to completely 100% deter every single person with every single piece of equipment and every knowledge base out there from getting into it. It's just buying yourself time, you yeah, know? I exactly. mean, we've all seen Ocean's 11, 12, and 13. I mean, <laughs> you can get into anything. But, um, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's buying yourself time. It's understanding that you know a lot of thieves out there are looking for something that's quick and easy. Right. So instead of taking the time to go down your driveway and 
bust the window into your truck, make a bunch of noise, and you know, rummage around through stuff and take a bunch of time. Instead of doing that, they're just going to go check a bunch of door handles until they find the one that's unlocked. Yep. Grab the grab the garage door opener out of it, pop the garage door, get in, find what they can, and you know, I mean, that's that's yep. how they're going to work. Yep. So, well, they're not. I'd say oftentimes they're not looking for a confrontation. Right. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. they don't want to get caught. They don't want to get shot. So you know, mo- most criminals are—they're not always the smartest, but they're—they're um, they're pragmatic. They're practical. They—they they don't want to get in trouble. They don't want to get caught. So they're going to look for the easy, easy mm-hmm. targets. So for sure, and there's a lot of simple things people can do to help prevent that. And it's just—you know—we talked about it before with the garages. You know. Like, yeah, you, you might close your garage door, but that door leading into your garage, that needs to be locked too, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, you hear stories about guys rolling down the street with different garage door openers until they find one that opens. They pull around, hop inside, you know, and they pop that door open, and, oh, what do you have by the door by the garage? There's their car keys. Yep. You know, pick that up, and then they're gone with yep. your car. Yeah, we had, I remember my parents uh, growing up in middle school, there was this period of time where every time we'd come home, our garage door was open, even though we would always watch it close. Huh. And we found out that by pure stroke of luck or unluck, somebody just down the street had built a new house and the garage door opener signal was matching yep. or at least close enough to ours because there's there's not infinite amounts of garage door opener signals. Like eventually you Correct. can find the same one. And so every time that they would back out of their driveway and close their garage door, it would then open our closed garage door at the same Ooh. time. And so it kept happening over and over. And finally, we had to get the code or whatever it was yeah. switched. But uh, it can't even be something like that. And to your point, too, if, if somebody just has a handful of garage door openers, they drive down as many suburban streets as they can in the middle of the night and they just start hitting buttons, you you may find one that just pops yep. open. Yeah. Um, okay, so getting into, let's say the side of things where you're in your home, you're asleep, something goes bump in the night, uh, and you're, well, I guess it's hard to say when you hear something that goes bump in the night. In the night. Yeah. Usually it's nothing. Could be something. Um, but Adrian, you went over right away some of the uh, thought process, uh, thought processes that people should have going through their head in these situations, and it's not always necessarily... It's a bad game. I'm going to go out with my, you know, my gun ready and I'm going to go yeah. down the stairs or wherever I heard the noise. There is a little bit more care that should probably be taken. Um, sometimes throwing on a pair of pants and holstering the weapon and just going to investigate. Um, and also this gets in a little bit to the safety thing because we discussed how some people feel as though when they're at the range, you know, oh, muzzle discipline is really important. I don't break the 180. I don't, I don't ever flag anybody else at the range. But, I mean, you know, if I were ever in a real-life situation, it, it could be a gun battle or something. I mean, you know, it, that's that's just going to happen. You know, and it's just um, there is a little bit of that thought process out there. Like, yeah, well, it's it's real-life stuff's happening. You know, like, people are just going to get flagged. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, some of the safety and some of the not necessarily immediately going into Rambo mode. Sure, sure. Well, let's, let's just hit the safety one um, right there. Um, I feel very strongly that it is never acceptable to point your gun at something you do not wish to destroy. Never. So, um, yep, I, I, I've worked with uh, different teams or different groups or different people who are like, oh, yeah, you know, well, we're moving through a house. We're a team. Like, muzzles are going to sweep each other. We're going to sweep each other's legs, this and that. Like, unacceptable. Nope. Nope. Unacceptable. It's a cardinal rule. You don't break it. You don't cross any uh, muzzle across anything you're not willing to destroy. Um, does it? inadvertently happens sometimes. Yes, it could. I've seen it happen. Okay. I've seen it happen with teams going through a house, this and that, but that is then up to each and every single individual person in that situation to recognize it and immediately correct it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if you don't, that's when people get shot, period. And if you shoot, you shoot the wrong person, you shoot yourself, you shoot your family member, it still counts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and why wouldn't you want to really avoid doing that when adrenaline is pumping and when you're getting tunnel vision and when you're starting to lose some sensory? I mean, yeah. all this stuff. I feel almost as though I'm never going to flag anybody with my muzzle. But if I'm at the range and I'm not like freaking out about something, sure, I'm much less likely to accidentally pull the trigger or have my finger on the trigger when it shouldn't be on the trigger or whatever, because you're just in a much calmer state of mind. You could argue that in that situation, it's even more important that you're not 
yeah. muzzling someone. So, yeah, I just want to put that one to rest. That's uh, I totally disagree with the, oh, in the real world, you know, we're going to be lax on safety. Absolutely not. I you mean, don't point your gun at anything you're not willing to destroy. Safety should be very deliberate, but at the same time, you should be following those rules subconsciously. You know, your finger shouldn't be in the trigger guard, okay? And and that you shouldn't have to think about it. Like it should just happen. Yeah. Naturally. Like those should be automatic because hey, you know, uh, like like we're going to talk about later when when we put you guys in a situation where the stress level goes up and now you're starting to shoot at each other, okay? You have limited brain power to start thinking about certain things. Like you don't have time to consciously think about that. You don't have time to consciously think about marksmanship or safety. That stuff has to automatically be there, mm-hmm. and it always matters. That, that safety stuff, if, if, if there's a safety violation going on, it should feel weird, whether you're holding the gun or someone else in the room is holding the gun, like, you should pick up on that right away. That's the level it needs to be at. Mm-hmm. Where So, yeah, if somebody is, you know, I'm holding, I'm holding on this door and somebody starts stepping into my, my field of view, where immediately I recognize that and I correct my muzzle, I have to adjust for that. Yeah. So It should give you a, kind of a sick feeling. It should. It should. Absolutely. Yep. Like, yep. ugh. Yeah, yep. it should. I, I, yeah. Let's put it this way. Like, if the roles were reversed, would it be okay if I flagged you if I pointed my gun at you? How about just for like a second or two? Are you yeah. okay with that? No. No? How about just it's at pretty, your foot? It's Is pretty that cool? easy when no, you put it's it that way. Yeah. It's, it's not cool. easy when you put it that way. Right. Yeah. It's not cool. Right. So, so don't do it to someone else. You shouldn't do it in the real world. Yep. You yeah. know? Yeah. There's, yeah. I know what you're saying. People are like, well, this is real world. This is big boy rules. This is going to happen. Like, no, yeah. not acceptable. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, you've heard something, yeah. and uh, let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about what you grab. And, um, you know, because we discussed Pete loves a flashlight, and I'm sure we're going to get into that. Oh, yeah. But uh, he's always got it on him. He's got it on him right now. I found um, it. Mark tried to steal it, but <laughs> <laughs> I got it. So what oh, you yeah. grab, and you even talked about even throwing on a pair of pants if you got them and stuff, and then how you're going about <laughs> Mark's going for that judo chop. He's trying to <laughs> knock me out right now. Uh, and then how you're going about, you know, figuring out what it was. Yeah. Yep. So... I mean, there's a lot lot going on there. So, you know, you hear that bump in the night, right? So if I hear if I hear my door getting kicked in and I know pretty okay, obvious. Pretty obvious. Pretty big right? Bump. Okay. At that point, yeah, I'm getting my family, I'm calling nine one one. All right. I don't want you I don't want anybody to ever assume anything. We as we as human beings have a way of hearing something or perceiving something and then we try to like rationalize it away. Like, oh, it's probably just the wind, right? It's probably nothing. I'm probably overreacting. I don't want you to do that. I want you to keep an open mind. Okay. But yeah, most of the time, especially where I, where I live, if I hear something, a commotion or my dogs wake up barking nine times out of 10, it's like something outside. There's some coyotes outside. I kind of live out in the country and you know, they're trying to get into the chicken coop or something like that. Right. So And especially where I live, if I call the sheriff for every single thing that I hear, (laughs) number one, they would get sick coming to my house. And number two, um, it's going to take them 20, 25 minutes to get there. Okay. So, you know, what do I like to do? If it's an obvious thing, if it's someone breaking into your house, call the police, barricade yourself in your room, get your family together. That's obvious. Okay. Um, If it's it's something else that maybe needs a little more investigating before that, um, yeah, we talked about what we like to have beside the bed. I like to have a gun and a holster. I like to have a light. Pete mentioned, do you need glasses? Do you wear contacts? No good wandering around your house right. if you can't see anything, <laughs> yeah, right? Very true. I mean, we laugh about it, but it happens. Absolutely. It happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so then, and then the other thing is I don't like just walking around my house, especially if I have to go outside or anything like that, just carrying a gun in my, in my hand. So I like to have it in a holster. I like to be able to, to be able to have it in a holster. I pretty much need a pair of pants, and a belt, okay? So I hear something that needs investigating, okay? Um, I'm going to take a moment to put on some pants, all right? Quick, you know, throw that holster on, grab my flashlight, and then go check it out. Because I don't know, maybe, um, you know, if it's a knock on the door, I don't know. That could be, you know, a friendly neighborhood law enforcement officer coming to tell me that uh, my garage door is open. Yeah. Or... Um, or, you know, something happened with a family member, or it could be my neighbor because they have a problem. There, there could be 
a dozen reasons why somebody legitimately could come knock on your door in the middle of the night. And with any one of those, I don't necessarily want to be answering the door with a gun in my hand. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, so, you, and, and usually, if it was something benign, you know, let's say it is a neighbor coming over or whatever, and they're in some emergency situation, they're probably really distraught. And then if you're pointing a gun at them, <laughs> yeah. it's not going to make their situation any better. And nope. they're going to be like, geez, my night just got a lot worse. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. So um, be cautious. You know, I, th- that's what I do. I have it on me. I have it concealed underneath a T-shirt. I can go check things out. But if I need it, I can get to it quickly. Um, now, there's there, there's a lot of a lot of things depend here depend on the situation right you know if I hear something outside I start going to investigate it I think it's you know it's probably nothing and I see there's somebody breaking into my car well now all of a sudden that's going to change things real quick I'm not going to run out there and confront that person right I'm going to make sure I'm safe I'm going to get on the phone I'm going to call nine one one okay because again if I take steps to go and escalate that situation I don't have a right to use deadly force to defend my property. So now I go out there, let's say, and I try to get him to stop stealing my car. Now he confronts me, and we're involved in the shooting. It might still be a legally justified shooting, but I have a lot more things that now I need to explain, a lot more hurdles. Uh, People are going to second guess. Why did you go out there? You were perfectly safe in your house. You put yourself in danger, so now you had to use deadly force. Yeah. And, you know, a, a, a prosecutor who's maybe looking to prosecute you, for, uh, prosecute you for that case is now going to start saying, no, you wanted to go shoot that person. You were looking for trouble. You yeah, had, you, had you had a had gun an, on you. Yeah, you exactly. You had an opportunity to yep. retreat. Yeah, and, you, and you, didn't, you didn't take it. Generally speaking, the castle doctrine ends at the threshold of the door. You go outside, okay, and um, you know things change. So yeah. situation, it's, it's going to depend. So that's, that's another reason why I kind of prefer a pistol over an AR or a shotgun. I mean, they all make good home defense weapons. The shotgun and the AR are great if you're going to be in one place, you're going to barricade in your house, right? In a barricade in your uh, in your bedroom or something like that. They're easy to shoot, um, low recoil. They don't uh, the ARs don't you know uh, bullets tend not to over penetrate through uh, residential building materials. Um, but the handgun, I think, is kind of the go to because it's it's mobile because I can I can do other things with it. I can keep it concealed yeah. um, as opposed to you know a rifle that I have to keep slung. So yeah, that, yeah just my opinion that you know. And then there's the flashlight. There's the flashlight. The almighty flashlight. Um, man, you know, I said it before, if there's one thing I want you guys to take away from this training is how important these are and how useful of a tool it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think we, we talked about it a bit in our pistol-specific podcast and, and regarding concealed carry and stuff, too, because it comes in handy there. You know, nobody's going to be as pissed off at you if you shine a light in their face as they are if you shoot them. Right. Or, and or, they didn't mean to be shot. a gun shot. right at them. Right. Exactly. Um Big fan of the handheld lights because they're detached from the pistol. I can, I can argue that this is going to be faster than a weapon-mounted light because this can be out way sooner. Okay, um, and I can use it for everyday tasks. You know, I, I use this thing constantly. Jimmy, I know you 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 carry a, a flashlight and mine's dinky. It, yeah, but I mean it, it works. And Yours I tell you better. what, oh, I, there it is on already. Um, I use this thing more than I use my uh, knife, and a lot of people are gonna you know think that's sacrilegious but um i use that thing more i'm going to turn uh 44 in october my eyesight isn't what it used to be and it's only going to get worse so i carry a flashlight all the time just for everyday tasks but it's it's also great um you know if if i need to confront someone or i'm sorry somebody's confronting me um it's it's kind of a nice thing to uh you know just get a quick identification um, it's, it's kind of a nice way of saying, stop whatever it is you're doing, stay there. Um, I can, I can get a lot of information quickly. That's what lights are good for. They're great for identifying. And as we kind of found out in the shoot house, it's just a nice visual stun. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, like yeah. you put the, you put a light on someone in the right environment and that's all they're going to see. And there's no know. waiting period. Still <laughs> <one>. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now you I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but it, you it know, is because if you... Oh. They they either are blinded by the light, um, wrapped up. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> or they close their eyes and they can't see anything anyway. How, so how did you know that reference? But you've never seen True Lies. I, you, oh. I don't know. I don't know. I just never seen the movie. I'm fearful that I'm actually gonna like start watching the movie and be like, oh wait, no, I've seen this movie. But yeah, I don't think I've I seen that too. movie. But no. I mean, after the amount of ridicule we've been through today, oh, I I, I will I, be actively finding that yeah. movie. Yeah. 
you know, anyway. you're also removing something, I feel, with, with the flashlight. Like, people use the dark to conceal themselves yes. to commit crimes. And now you're taking one of their pr- primary tools, I guess, yeah. away from them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you know, you're taking away their concealment. And, um, you know, it goes back to that positive identification. Mm-hmm. You know, light is information. And, and a really, really bright light can give you a lot of information very quickly and allow you to assess. Um, you know, we don't, we don't want to shoot family members, okay? Um, you know, we talked about this before. You know, you have daughters that are going to be teenagers, you know. They might have a friend sneaking over or they might be sneaking out, okay? I'm in the same situation. We, we, They're we, always going to listen to me. Always. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they are. So I'm sure hey, they're always, just letting you know. They're always going to go nuts when you come home and be all excited. And, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, there are people out there that get so drunk that they uh, get confused as to where they live. And, you know, they try to they think they're breaking into their own home and it's actually yours. You know, there's there's a multitude of reasons why we want to have a flashlight. And if you own a firearm for self-defense, you need to have some sort of white light. I, I wish they just sold these. With with handguns, yeah. like like <laughs> like you you really they should mm-hmm. be one and the same, and, you know. And, and taking it a step further, a lot of people I have a, I have a weapon mounted light on my handgun, but I still have a handheld light because it comes back to what can we point our guns at, right? Yeah. If, mm-hmm. if I'm not sure who I'm I'm identifying here down in the house, it might be my family member. I don't want to point a light that has a gun attached to it at them, right? It just so makes I can sense. have that handheld out. Um, the weapon mounted lights are great for shooting or if I know, uh, you know, there's a really good chance that I'm going to be pointing my gun at a bad guy. Okay. That's a different story. But yeah. when I'm just searching, the handheld light is the way to go. It's a must have. So even if you have a weapon mounted light, got to have a handheld light too. Yeah. Yep. Well, and then the onus is on you to also train with said handheld light as well. Cause if you're always only training, shooting your pistol with two hands, gripping the pistol in the ideal situation, and now all of a sudden you're asking one hand to hold a light and point it so that you can identify something, uh, and then actually having your brain identify what the light is showing you. And then another hand manipulating a firearm. It's not the same thing as when you're at the range just kind of like, boom, boom, boom. You know, it's, it's not. Um, and that I know Mark and I, I don't know, actually, Mark, I shouldn't speak for you, but I know I found it was a little bit weird. I was fidgeting with the flashlight a lot when... Pete handed me the flashlight and I was going to barricade myself in one of the rooms in the shoot house and I'm setting up there and I've got a pistol. I'm like, well, I know how to aim a pistol at the door. That's not hard. Right. But then with the flashlight, I was like, do I hold it like that? Do I want to hold it like that? And, you know, and then fidgeting around with that a lot. And then also being like, gosh, I don't, I don't normally shoot a pistol with one hand, you know? And yep. Okay, I got, I got, we're using red dots on the pistol, so I'm like, okay, that's my sight picture, but it took a little bit, I mean, if it were just something where I woke up and it was like, stuff's happening, I'm trying to do this, I don't, you don't get the time to be like, well, let me see which way I like better. It's like, nope, it's happening. We, we can spend a whole day on the range um, shooting and, and learning techniques with, with the handheld flashlight, and um, there's a multitude of reasons that you should know how to shoot a um, a handgun one-handed. Um, one of which is, you know, you're trying to call 911. You're on, you're on the line with, you know, 911. I mean, okay, there's one hand, you know, mm-hmm. now you got a light. Okay. There's another hand, you know, it's, it's, if you have a young kid, right. Right. Grab a young kid. You're carrying down the hallway. Yeah. Um, you know, all sorts of, all sorts of reasons. You yeah. know, we, we, you know, if you guys want, we can, we can take you on the range, do some live fire training one-handed, um, you know, I think it's really important. I think it'd be very telling. It's very telling. It's very important. Plus, um, it's kind of how you get better at shooting a little bit. Um, you get so good that, okay, you feel comfortable with one hand. Now you get both hands back on the gun, and it's, it feels like cheating <laughs> a little bit. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good way to improve those skills. But it's, it's very handy. Um, but, yeah, we can, we can train on that. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's just a really good point. Like, if you're going to implement these tools, then – practice with them yes. because I mean same story Jim like we hadn't done any you know training with lights you know we did some pistol shooting I did a little bit a little follow up with Pete you know but that was all two hands on the pistol and yeah like you said you're just kind of like oh do I hold it like this and then Pete's like oh you know he, you know head index I think that's what we did yeah with, you know yeah like kind it's, of it's, on a, it's a version of you know there's a lot of different techniques you can use um one of them a traditional one is is a one-handed um it's called a neck index and then um 
a variation of that is, is getting it on your forehead right yeah. here and using your elbow to kind of direct everything. Um, this is a really good technique because if you have a pistol mounted red dot, it kind of puts the light above over the gun so you're not getting that white light kind of splash on the back of your lens. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a lot more natural position to get into. But um, yeah, it is. But I mean, you know, your stability with the pistol with one hand and maintaining that sight picture and, you know, those uh, what we are using in the shoot house today, like the recoil is it's there's some, I guess. Yeah. But it's not the same as like, you know, you know, your standard nine, I guess, or mm -hmm. something like that. That's going to be a lot more poppy. And then you're trying to, you know, shoot that one handed and it's just going to be I don't know. Y your first time figuring out what it's like shouldn't be uh, when you're having to use it for real. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And so here's here's the interesting thing about low light training. Um, you know, we we preach dry firing. Okay. Um, you can shut the lights off in your house and practice. That's all these techniques you can practice dry mm -hmm. um, at home. Just shut the lights off. I mean, it's great. It's your home. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's where your fight's going to be, and uh, you can you can practice getting a sight picture. You know, with different techniques, you can you can do all that dry. I know, um, you know, it's it's actually pretty rare for people to get any kind of um, heck, even like police officers who need to know this stuff. Very rarely at all get to do any kind of live fire training um, with white light. Yeah, like it's extremely mm. rare, and like they need it more more than anyone. We're we're pretty fortunate that we have a range we can shut the lights off during yeah. the day and practice that, but but most people just don't get that opportunity. We had a low light class last week and we had several police officers in it and we asked them, you know, how often do you guys, does your department train for actually do low light flashlight stuff? You know, once a year? And some of them were like, maybe mm -hmm. every other year. Mm -hmm. So. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and it's, it's not, it's not easy. I mean, being in those situations, first off, if we didn't have a light, you're up a creek without a paddle, really. Right. Because, if you're just shooting at a dark figure, you're you're going to potentially be in trouble with, oh my gosh, I shot somebody I didn't want to shoot. You're going to potentially be in trouble with, um, okay, I shot somebody, I got lucky that they were a bad guy, but now I have to try and explain to somebody who's going to be trying to come in and ask me a bunch of questions to try and get me in trouble. Uh, you know, yeah. well, tell me, you see tell them? me what you saw. Yeah, well, tell me what you saw. Yeah, uh, nothing. Dark Shooting at a target that you have not identified positively is the definition of reckless. Yes, as in reckless homicide. Oh, so that sounds yeah. worse than yep. regular homicide, which already sounds bad. Well, it's it, it's <laughs> it's it's an act that you should have known that a reasonable person would know was absolutely reckless because yeah. you didn't know what you were shooting at. You can't do that. Gosh, it's so it's brutal that they expect everybody to be reasonable in these situations but at the same time it is also like okay if they're going to expect that then and realistically even for your own good you should try to remain reasonable in these situations yeah. not freak out not panic you know try and remain calm the stakes are very high we're talking about potentially taking someone's life there has to be a huge deal of responsibility attached to that, yeah. okay? Um, you know, l life, I feel, has an intrinsic value to it, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, and there's a finality about that, right? Uh, you know, depending on, on what your <laughs> religious or spiritual views are, you know, you get, you get one shot here on earth. So you snuff that out, like, that's all you get. Yeah. So I, I think there is a, a heavy burden that needs to be placed on that, and rightfully so. That said, the laws are written in a way where, again, we use that term reasonable. Okay, I think I mentioned in the shoot house, you don't necessarily need to be right, but you need to be reasonable. So meaning, you know, th th that example of guy breaks into your house and he's armed with a pellet gun. Looks like a real gun. You shoot him. You thought it was a real gun. You reasonably felt right, in, in danger of, you know, your life or, or uh, that he could do uh, great bodily harm. Totally reasonable. We're not going to sit there. No jury is going to sit there. Um, it's not the legal standard to judge you with perfect 2020 hindsight. We're not going to Monday morning quarterback this. At least we shouldn't. That's not what the legal yeah. standard is. We're going to look at was the information that you knew at the time, what was that information, and then was your decision reasonable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, even if there's a mistake of fact or something like that, you didn't know it was a pellet gun, okay? So you have you have some leeway. It's reasonableness. Yeah. You don't have to be 
perfect. Well, there was like some really tough ones you guys threw in there when we were actually we're suited up in snowmobile gear and we got masks <laughs> on and we have the uh, actual um, simulated rounds or these these training rounds. And uh, you guys stuck me in a room and Mark came in. He didn't have a gun, but I had the room barricaded. And I'm yelling at him, like, get out, get out. I have a gun. I will shoot you if you come in here. Do not come in here. Get out, get out. And and he's, like, busting the door in, you know? I mean, he's, like, shoving that barricade back, and he's, he's like, like, advancing the shining. advancing towards me. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, man, yeah. Good thing you didn't say that before it happened. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't give him any time. I just shot him right away. <laughs> Here's Johnny. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that that was happening, and so at that point in time, you know, I went ahead and in this training situation took the shots. Well, then we find out, and, you and you know, he didn't have a gun on him. But I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm yelling at him to not come in here. He continues pushing through my barricade, so he's forcefully entering. And, and there's then all this stuff that you get into the reasonable yeah. side of things. You know, right. if somebody were to just say, well, on paper here, he didn't have a gun. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it gets well, yeah, and then, you know, like uh, unarmed man shot five times at point blank range. That's that could be the news story. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yep. But yeah. yep. you know, and, and I feel like you know, you're talking about you know Monday morning quarterback and stuff. Like, yeah, after when you have all the facts, it's yeah. easy to analyze something. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have all those facts at the time. Yeah, you, you need to have a, uh, a a white light will help you get a lot of those facts. Yeah. Well. Yep. You know, it's it's interesting. So, you know, talking about those scenarios, like it, it was interesting because we we had you guys um, play the different roles. Okay, you know, we typically we didn't have a role player. You know, this was your house. Okay, Mark was the bad guy, and vice versa. So it was interesting. You got to see it from both both angles. Um, you know, when white light was effectively used, you know, what what, what could you see on on either side? I mean, nothing. Could you tell how much of As an advantage? Guy, no. Yeah, how much of an advantage that was? I know when we were messing around at first, and and uh, Jimmy was trying to sneak in the window. Like we we lit you up with 350 lumens, and you were the literal deer caught in the headlight. Mm-hmm. Like you you couldn't do anything. I couldn't even. I mean, I was halfway in the window, and I all of a sudden right. couldn't figure out where I was, and I just had to stop. Right. Yeah. You know, and going back to white light i mean that that is it is such an advantage i don't even know if it's worth like if if you're in a situation you think someone's in your house i don't think it's worth turning on the lights i really don't like you know the layout of the place get a handheld white light and use the environment to your advantage yeah i'm gonna wear a welder's mask if i ever try to get into your house (laughs) (laughs) oh i I got some other tricks up my sleeve (laughs) He's got he's got pits and all those Rambo, <laughs> Rambo traps. Yeah, yeah it's, um, a, it's a Home Alone paint can swinging from the ceiling. Yeah, yep. toolbox coming yeah. down the stairs. What is all this sharpened bamboo? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tiger um, traps. Man, yeah, those uh, getting put in some of those situations um, was pretty uh, was pretty intense. We threw in a, a number of different ones. I came into Mark's room at one point. I was armed. I had the gun out. You know, Mark, you ID'd me with the gun and and the light. Um, and then, you know, there was another one where, uh, I mean, Adrian, you even really had me throw a wrench at Mark where I came in and I had my hands up and I'm telling Mark, you know, yeah. Hey, I'm here to like, I, I, I think I lost my kid. I think my kid came in here or something. And Mark's telling me to not come any closer, you know, stop, stop. But I just kept advancing towards him and I had a gun hanging out of my pocket and stuff. It's yeah. just, it's, you can, you could do infinitely many of those situations and each yeah. one of them is so unique and so, um, yeah, just so different from the next and the timing at which things happen and the things that you should try and remember to say. Actually, the, the verbal communication was one mm-hmm. um, that uh, you, you guys would ask us afterwards, okay, well, do you remember what you said? You know, sure. uh, you could have said this and not even all of it is necessarily to, uh, well, if you would have said this, the person would have said, oh, okay, and they would have turned around and walked out the door. That's not necessarily what you're going for, but we're also considering the fact that you've dialed 911 at this point and you've stayed on the line with them, which you guys did say is what you would yeah, recommend doing. Standard. Yeah. Standard. Yeah. You've stayed on the line with them and uh, they're recording that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, or or maybe I don't know if you call it a conversation, but they're recording <laughs> that yeah. verbal uh, dialogue. dialogue. Yeah. Yep. Well, so, it's, it's, you know, we talk about, Talk about ethics, and you know if you have to take someone's life, 
you want to know that you kind of did everything possible, you know, to prevent that. And if you're up in your room with your family and you have no reason to leave and you're telling this gentleman that the police are on their way and that you are armed and, you know, you, you basically tell him what you're going to do if he does this. You know, if you come into this room, I will shoot you. If you don't leave, I will shoot you, you know. And it does happen. I mean, it, it kind of it, it takes the burden away from you. You can sit there and be like, I did everything I could have yeah. to prevent this. Yeah. And, you know? and if that dialogue is recorded on a yeah. 911 call. I mean, we, we kind of we talked about language, right? And we and we talked yeah. about you. I might, wouldn't have thrown a bunch of four letter words. Yeah, you start might start screaming at Mark. Hey, get the bleep out of yeah. here! You bleeping bleep you, hole. You might bleep be upset. Bleep, he is right? a bleep hole. <laughs> and I think, and <laughs> I, think, I think people know what that one might have been, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you might be upset, and yeah, maybe okay. Mark is some punk who that he understands that language, but I think I, I mentioned. What's your grandmother going to think when she hears that on the news? Okay, yeah, here's the you're, recording. You're going to sound like you're out of control. Yeah. You're going to sound it's like aggressive, you're hot angry. Head. Exactly, right? Yeah. Versus, you know, I need you to leave. Don't come in here. You sound like you're calm. You're under control. Um, you, you know, you, you're doing everything you can to avoid shooting somebody. Yeah. Um, Pro 2A activist, yeah. yeah, screams and shoots. Exactly. You know, you know, unarmed person, of course, like little do you know, they've got like a crowbar and they were coming yep. in your room exactly. forcefully. P- yeah, so. Plus, again, if you have your family there, calm is contagious. If you're up here, your family is going to pick up on that and they're going to be freaking out too. They're looking for you to be calm and in charge and be their protector. So you have to stay calm. Yeah. Um, Let's see. What else did we? Uh, there was something else you mentioned there too. One one thing I wanted to bring up is when you're when we're talking about the scenario where Jim was coming in, he had oh, his hands yes. up yep. and he's saying, you know, he's giving me the story, um, and for me, like that was like another thing that I was having to process, right? And when you guys were talking about, there's only so many things you can process, right? Like that was an extra layer that I was having to like mentally deal with. Oh yeah, I was totally and, putting more burden on you by doing that. And you know. uh, I just it was it was interesting like it, like post situation analysis, I don't know like we keep going back to like oh man you got to you know people say oh you got to train practice train practice, but um, until you do something like that you don't it's hard to comprehend how each one of these what seems like very little things actually becomes like a big layer that yes. you're having to yep. sift through in that situation. Yeah. So that's kind of what I wanted to get back to because you made the point like there's so many little. Details, and I think you said everything is different, right? Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, in you know 2020, um, people have a tendency of looking at um, a situation that they see, a shooting, right? Whether it's a, a self-defense shooting, a police shooting, whatever, they read a paragraph or two about it on CNN. Oh and man, they, that's they, generous! They, I don't think people yeah. read a paragraph. Oh, wow. <laughs> I read the headline. They read the headline. headline. It's a headline. It's a right. headline. <laughs> I'm giving people more credit than uh, than they deserve. <laughs> And then they make a decision about that. And they're like, well, that's no way. That's totally unreasonable. Yeah. And it's like, you're absolutely right. The, the smallest details make a huge difference. And you can't judge that situation until you have all of those mm. facts. And that can take months to get to. Um, so the, the tiniest things, the little things, how, what you perceive, what somebody says. You know, we were talking about the scenario where, um, where, yeah, you were walking, like, hands up, saying, hey, I lost my kid, this and that. Um, you know, we, we look at, um, you know, intent, okay? What is that person, uh, what are their words versus what are their actions? Actions mm. speak louder than words. Yes, you had your hands up and you were acting all innocent, but at the same time, you're armed and you're closing the distance. And I had yeah. already broken and into And you'd already broken into a night. house at, at like, night. At like <laughs> 2 a.m. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. again, yeah, can the media have a field day with that? Unarmed man shot in house, you know, Um but again, what was his intent? And we can look at a handful of shootings that are controversial right now, and you know we yeah. can dissect those and and actions and words. Yeah, and they he, don't always line up. Even if you legally were, you know, even if you were in the right completely, and you legally go through the whole thing, and you essentially um, aren't going to jail because of this. And yep. and Adrian, you said something too. It was it was very um, eye opening for me. You mentioned you're going to be in a homicide investigation now. Yeah. Because somebody just died in yep. your house. Yeah. At your hand. Um, anyway, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's a big deal. It's heavy. Um, even if you do make it through that and the jury agrees, you know, totally reasonable, uh, again, your life can still be ruined. 
if the headlines that are getting put out there and the stories are getting put out there and the recordings or whatever it is that gets out there um, still doesn't show the uh, you in the best light. And realistically, no matter what the situation is, there's always a chance that they can figure out some way to spin it, right? And that's, that's the thing. Yep. But if you can at least try to do as many things as you can to avoid uh, giving the media that field day or as much uh, to snack on there, so to speak then you at least set yourself up a little bit better. And a lot of that comes with being prepared. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I can tell you, unfortunately, what is common practice these days, okay, is um, somebody who gets shot, their family calls an attorney, and the attorney calls a PR firm. And they get a big public relation firm behind things to start mm -hmm. spreading um, rumors or misinformation in the media it's happened dozens of times hmm. it it happens all the time and uh you know you can win that that criminal battle right um whether uh it's at a trial or hopefully not even getting that far where you're not charged you're cleared by a da or a grand jury or whatever but your case is going to be reviewed by somebody to determine whether or not you should be charged with murder you get through that well now you still potentially could be sued civilly and the burden of proof in a civil trial is significantly lower than a criminal trial. So burden mm -hmm. of proof in a civil trial is um, uh, a preponderance of the evidence, which means more likely than not. They, they have to show 51% that it was your fault that this guy died. That's not a very high level of proof. It's not beyond a reasonable doubt. It's not that same level as a criminal trial. So huh. you, can, you can get out of the, you know, not be charged criminally, do everything right, and you still have a serious lawsuit that you could potentially lose, or you at least have to have to spend hundred thousand dollars to defend. Man, so, that, that's like it sucks. Uh, yeah, it does when you've done nothing wrong. Well, and that and that goes into a little bit too. Why, why, in people's mind's eye, you know, somebody broke into my house. I'm Rambo now. Boom, 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 swinging in on ropes. You know, like all this stuff. And then you think to yourself, okay, maybe you got your cool little adrenaline-filled home defense dream but do you really want to deal with everything afterwards you know could you have just hold up with your family call 911 and let the cops deal with it and yeah there's a lot of baggage attached Eey. to um owning a firearm for self defense and 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 believe me i am uh, um an ardent uh, uh diehard defender of the second amendment i think people who are are trained and um and and pick up a firearm for self defense are you know absolutely you're going to be better off but there's a lot of responsibility that's attached to it. You mm. can't take it lightly, okay? And, and, and that's for your own protection and your own family's protection. Um, you know, I, I mentioned before, there's a saying, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. Well, I kind of think that's BS. I really don't want to have either because both of those can be really, really bad for my life and my family's life. So I want to get it right, and I want to do everything I possibly can to avoid both of those situations. Neither of yeah. those is good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Man, w w I'm shifting gears like kind of a little bit all over here. But uh, one of the discussions we had, so we've mentioned a lot, you know, barricade yourself up in your room. And, uh, you know, I was I was mentioning, well, I, I can't help but feel like there are times when you would have to be moving around your house. And we've gotten into it a little bit. You sure. know, let's say, uh, you know, I don't have any kids right now. Mark does, though. You know, you got to run and grab your kids and hopefully get everybody in the same area because you don't want to have your family spread all over the house when you're trying to protect everyone because you can't split up into multiple pieces. You never know what might happen to... I mean, it's just... Uh, there's a million reasons why. I don't really have to explain it that much. But uh, so you may have to move to get somebody and get everybody into one area. Um, you may have to move if, let's say, you mentioned it, Adrian, you're out in the garage and you hear your door kick get kicked in. Sure. Um, or you hear somebody scream inside or something like that happens. Um, the, uh, the other one was too, and now I'm throwing two things at you again. Cause I think I just like doing that for some reason. <laughs> uh, okay. So, you know, let's say you've moved around your house, you've gotten people in, in one area. And then I was wondering as well, well, actually, how am I going to set up in the room? You know, am I directly across from the door? Am I diagonal from the door? Am I in a closet? Am I, you know, so, yeah. Uh, some of this movement and positioning stuff. Sure, sure. So um, what, we're, what we're ultimately looking for is we want to put ourselves in a position of advantage, right? We want to put ourselves in a position that is going to give us the highest probability 
of, if necessary, being able to engage your bad guy and not get hit by his bullets, potentially, okay, make it as difficult for him, okay, to to engage us, okay? So we're looking for how can I how can I improve my position? How can I get into a position of advantage, all right? So we can look at angles. We can look at cover, so things that stop bullets, th uh, concealment, things that hide me from view. Uh, I want to think about where is a location where I can see them before they see me. I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's a really big one. Um, so, you know, and it's difficult because we don't have visuals here, but on the, in the shoot house we talked about not setting up right in front of the door, right? Because when people open the door, the first thing they're going to see is whatever's in front of it in the center of the room. So mm -hmm. we're looking off at angles, um, hopefully barricading that door again so we can slow, uh, slow the person down as they're trying to get in through that door. If they come in like um, Kramer. In Seinfeld. <laughs> I mean, that's very jarring. Yeah, you know? yeah it can be. <laughs> exactly. You better be on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> Always good for a laugh. Yeah, yeah, but. yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, we talked about a closet. Okay, you know, a closet, it, it might, depending where it's at, um, it, it might give us a position, but at the same time, we don't have anywhere else to go now. So uh, it's really going to depend on, on your, own, your own room. But generally speaking, try to see it from the... Uh, your adversary's position, right? Okay, if I, if I was a bad guy coming in this room, where am I going to have a hard time seeing and shooting at? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what's going to what's gonna leave me as the bad guy exposed the most and protecting the, the homeowner? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. and we saw that too, like the way that door opens, right? Like you can, from the interior, you can see that door opening. So you're going to be... Some advance warning. Some yeah. advance warning, exactly. And then that person has to swing the door out enough or get around that door to expose themselves to see you. And mm -hmm. Talk a bit about uh, cover, too, because this came into play when we were even talking about moving through the house. So let's say you're sure. going down the hall to get to your kids or even when you're in uh, your a room. Um, but cover versus um, concealment. Yep. So in a house usually made of drywall and mm -hmm. wood. Yeah. Um, so not exactly an awesome bullet stopper. Nope. From what I've gathered. Yep. Uh, and then as you're moving around, you know, there's there's considerations with coming up on a doorway and pieing. Yeah. Uh, you can talk about pieing a little bit. And also not getting right up in a door frame or right up on a corner and, and you know, actually giving yourself some space off of that corner or door post. Sure. Um, what's... What's the reasoning there? Yeah. So, um, you know, as you're moving around a, a corner, right, um, the idea is you, you don't just want to pop out into a hallway, okay, um, that you're not sure whether it's cleared or not or there could be a bad guy in it, all right, because now you're exposing your entire body all at once. So kind of use a technique where, um, you know, you take a little slice of it at a time. So you smoothly, slowly kind of, um, as you're coming around the corner, just taking a little slice at a time so um, you're just not exposed all at once, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it helps you to see with that angle. It's, it's all about angles, right? It helps you to see around that corner if you're not right up, real sucked up tight to it. When we're in a dangerous situation, as, as, as humans in general, there's this tendency we want to get close to something because it makes us feel safer. Mm -hmm. Okay, But when we're actually trying to play the angles, we're trying to work the geometry of a corner, um, actually stepping back from it further is going to give us a better angle around that corner. Um, as for uh, you know, cover versus concealment, yeah. You know, cover is generally thought of something that stops bullets. Concealment is something that just you know, hides me. Um, there's not a lot in a house when it comes to building materials that's truly cover. That said, I'm going to use as much stuff as I can to put between me and the bad guy. So that could be a door frame and some drywall and stuff at an angle, okay? Um, that could be the bookshelf full of books that I have in the hallway, things like that. So you just need to be aware of, of your environment and, uh, you know, when possible, mm -hmm. you put as much stuff between you and the bad guy and, and you're going to Try to find the best position you can get. Yeah. So, just another incentive to have many leather bound books, Jim. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rich That's, mahogany. Yes. 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 Um, you know, another consideration, you know, with, with building material, um, if you have loved ones in other rooms, okay, and you do have to shoot one, um, the best bas backstop you have is that threat. I mean, you got to make you have to be very deliberate in how you shoot. And Wait, it really. Shoot one what? 
Let's what, clarify that for those listening. Yeah, you have loved ones around the house. Uh, and let, you have let's to say shoot. let's say you're trying to get to that room to yeah. get that loved one, and you run into somebody in between there. Ah, okay, got okay. It. Yep. Now we're yep. You know, we we can't. We have to be very deliberate in how we shoot because you know those walls typically will not stop bullets, and we can't guarantee that. Yeah. So and you're the, talking about what people often the very popular topic is in home defense. Penetration of the bullet. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. You know, the best backstop you have is is that threat you are shooting. And, like, kind of goes back to accuracy, you know. Yeah. Like, you have to hit what you're aiming at. And we were harping on that when the first first class we took together, that pistol class. You know, I'm there we are, perfect conditions on the range, you know. And, and you know, there's an infamous photo of me looking at Mark's first target, you know, and just kind of look of despair on my face. But... Um, you know, a lot, and, of, but, a lot of disappointment in those eyes. <laughs> you know what, though? That was the first group of the day, and then you you got a lot better from then on out. But, like, there's a reason we have such a high accuracy standard. You know, the illumination was 100%. Everybody was well-rested. Nobody was freaked out, okay? The conditions don't get any better than that. Mm. And now we throw you guys into a scenario where, you know, even though you know it's training, okay, you're shooting simunition rounds at each other, it's dark, you have a flashlight in your hand, stress level is kind of ramped up a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you think your shooting's going to get better or worse, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's going to get a little worse. That's why we have to train to this level. So, you know, you, you can't... You can't afford to miss in situations like that because that bullet could go through a wall and be hitting someone you care about. Yeah, it's funny because you'll have people who will argue about bullet construction and what type of what type of round am I using for home defense or for concealed carry and this and that, and then you'll get them on the range and, and <laughs> you'll see they're miss, they're missing their target with every third shot, and it's like over penetration isn't an issue if you're not hitting your target i mean it, yeah. it, it's it's it, you have to worry about <laughs> the round it's not penetrating anything it's just flying out there cuz you yeah. didn't hit what you were shooting at yeah so well and then the other thing too i would say is people talk about what ammunition they're going to use for home defense and they really harp on oh, i choose this one they've never actually shot it mm-hmm. yeah make sure that it range, works in their gun you go to the range and, and they're just shooting like cheap ammo I, I would argue it it doesn't matter what you shoot as long as you can shoot it well. I mean that that I I think is a very good argument. I, th- I, I think if you're using a, a good quality, you know, well, yeah. defensive round, I wouldn't shoot yeah. ball ammo out of my home defense pistol. But there's a lot of different good rounds out there. Do a little bit of research, you know, find something fairly standard. There's a lot of. Uh, uh, there's a lot of what I would call snake oil Artsy. out there right now. You know, there's all sorts of rounds that oh, they fragment into 16 pieces and spin and cut little death holes and bad guys <laughs> and stuff like that. Get a good quality expanding hollow point round that goes bang every single time. You know, makes sense to yeah. me. It's not hard to find a good round out there with a little Google searching. Yeah, that uh, has proven itself. That's been used in a lot of like law enforcement shootings and things like that. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty safe bet. Good indicator. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Exactly. Is is there an advantage, or or should a person take you know I guess their uh, practice rounds, but also shoot the rounds that they are intend to use for home defense? I, like, I, will there be a different? Will recoil be different, or could be? Well, I depends mean, on the round. Since we're talking about low light, um, you know, some rounds like you might have practice ammo that that looks okay in the dark, and then you know you load up those. Um, home defense rounds or, or you know, self-defense rounds, and suddenly you're getting muzzle flash that, like, you've never seen before. Oh, wow, yeah. And that kind of stuff can affect you in a low-light yeah. situation. Uh, typically, though, most really good home defense rounds have ammo that, that really doesn't flash, powder yeah. that, that, yep. that doesn't flash. But it's, it's always, you, you at least should try it out. Got to okay. make sure it feeds. Got to make right. sure it'll cycle through your gun. So you right. got to shoot at least a few, couple mags through it, right? Okay. And then, uh, and then point of impact, especially nowadays with oh, uh, sure. optics on pistols. Where we're not just relying on where the iron sight shoot. We're zeroing our pistol, okay? You can get uh, a pretty different shift uh, yeah. in impact between a, a, a carry round versus a practice oh, round. Oh, man, that yeah. makes a lot so, of sense. Yep. Gosh, you brought up optics. I had to... I did make fun of myself in our video a little bit because it sounds salesy, and obviously this is now when you realize that you are listening to the Vortex uh, Nation podcast. But anyways, we had red dots on those pistols, and I can't stress enough. Um, you've even alluded to some of this stuff. When I was barricaded up in that room, Mark was coming in, and I was you know, getting ready to uh, figure out whether I was going to engage all this stuff. I knew it was Mark. 
we're in a training scenario. I'm in a snowmobile outfit that basically makes, <laughs> if I get hit by one of these wax pellets, it may sting a little bit, but I'm definitely not going to die, much less even draw blood. And uh, the stakes were pretty low. My adrenaline was still pumping <laughs> hardcore. Mm-hmm. I was excited. Yeah. And, and, and in a nervous way, actually. Sure. Not even just kind of like, boy, I get to shoot Mark with this thing. Uh, no, it was actually... <laughs> I a was, little bit of that. I was yeah. a little bit... I was a, I was a little bit nervous. It's, uh, brain hardly knows what's going on, it, it seems like. It's still dumping adrenaline. And uh, started getting a little tunnel vision. Started losing some of my senses in terms of hearing. I actually, when we were kind of first practicing with just flashlights, basically playing flashlight tag, I could hear where Mark was by where his feet were walking. And then all of a sudden, granted, we were in these big helmets and stuff like that, but I couldn't hear him nearly as well. And I, I kind of start like getting a little bit, um, it's just an adrenaline rush, I guess. Yeah. But uh, when he came in, immediately I'm super laser focused on him, the target, and. I had the pistol up, and the red dot was in my field of view, and I got to completely, what's the word? Not forget, almost forget, but just kind of tune the red dot out yeah. of my focus. It's focusing on Mark, getting the white light on him, figuring out who he was, what his intentions were, was he armed, all this stuff. And the whole time, there was just a red dot on him. And... Then when it came time where I was like, nope, this guy is has bad intentions. He's coming in. I've told him a million times to get out. Uh, then all I had to do was pull the trigger. I didn't have to shift focus from guy to front sight, guy to front sight, guy to front sight. Does he have a gun? Front sight. Oh, wait, where's the guy? Wait, where's my front sight? The whole time it was just, I'm focusing on the target. The red dot's there the entire time. And, okay, now I need to employ it. Boom. Well, it was very seamless. And I... It all happened without me even having to think about it. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. And that's what we want. Yep. Yeah. And a, a big part a big part of the stress for me, and that, w- that was stressful. You know, I mean, it's like, yeah, your, your heart's pumping. My breathing rate went up. Adrenaline was going. And part of that stress was I know something's going on, but I want to make the right decision. Yeah. You know? Yeah, people I, watching you, you're in front of your peers, you're, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah there's some stress there. there Absolutely. Yeah, th- there was that, but, uh, and I guess, yeah, part of that, you know, I didn't want to, you know, all of a sudden start busting some caps and it's uh, the, honey, I'm home. Like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, yep. my bad. We like, were, we were going to put uh, Jimmy in a wig and try to simulate it. We, sure <laughs> we can still do late. that. No. This, there's, we have time. I'm not into that. No. no that's but, not my thing. Well. All right, well, we'll get you there. Um, <laughs> we'll get Eric. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> we'll get Eric. Eric will do it. Uh, but yeah, but but in any where 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 I'm going with that though is the red dot helps. At least it helped me better identify like what's going on here. You yeah. know, as far as like you know, are are you a threat? Are you you know are you know, kid coming home yeah. late? It, are you? I, it allowed you to yeah. focus. On Jimmy, but you could still see it. Right. If that makes any sense. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's 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 a little harder with, with iron sights because now you're – I have to see Jimmy and I have to see, you know, the front sight. I have to do it all at once. But, but with that red dot, I can I can laser focus on Jimmy, see if he's a threat, and I'm still seeing that red dot there. And when it comes time to shoot, I just – I have completely eliminated one of the fundamentals of marksmanship, which I, is side alignment. I kind of feel the debate is over when it comes to pistol optics. Yeah. I mean, it allows you it allows you to target focus, which is huge in a self defense situation. It removes a fundamental of marksmanship, sight alignment. Okay, yes, there is a little bit of a learning curve with presentation and things like that. There's a few things you need to consider, but mm-hmm. there there have been legit studies that have been done now. Um, there's a, a white paper that Aaron Cowan did. There's a Norwich University study, or the two big ones that I think of. And they have shown definitively, scientifically, that hit percentages go up with people who are using optics on pistols in those situations. Um, the hits are better. They have to fire less rounds. They have less misses. Like, I, I think it's kind of a done deal. It is. Well, you know? And we've talked about this before, not to be like, red dots, red dots. But, like, when 
you just really get to see these things when you're kind of like putting them into practice. Like as manufactured as these scenarios were, like you're still putting these things into practice. And, you know, Jim's coming through the door and I'm kind of, uh, you know, trying to, I guess, you know, quote, pie this corner a little bit. But I'm also on my knee and I'm holding the flashlight and I'm not in an optimal, like I'm not like just standing up at the range, squared up to the target, right? Um, but I know with that red dot, if the dot's where I want it to be, even if I'm awkward, as long as I can see that sight picture and the dot's where it needs to be, that that's where that round is going to go. And that, yep. that gave me a high level of confidence, too, being in kind of mm-hmm. like that somewhat like awkward positioning. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, was, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it makes you think a little less because you have way more important things to think about. The whole shooting side should all be subconscious. Mm-hmm. You know, it should just be automatic. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm glad that worked out for you guys. It, able to see that, yeah. It, this whole, um, this whole project, if you will, like I mean, I f- I feel like it's um we can almost title it like practical tactical. Like these are some a lot of basic fundamentals to for self defense to be more self reliant to give you you know uh, a little bit more confidence and and yeah. you know a base to build off. But um, and not once have we done a barrel roll. I know. That's next week. Yeah, we'll get to <laughs> it eventually. N- ninja. Ninja kicks, barrel rolls, judo chops. Oh, you, judo. We did. Uh, we, yeah, no, we, we did yeah. judo chops. I also did the judo chop. Sneak that one so, in. All right. So when yep. you guys are running around, yeah. Um, That's and, you know, cool. and I'll throw in, even just thinking about some of these things as mm-hmm. far as, um, like, oh well, what if somebody does break into my house? What do I do? Like, you know, just having yeah. having a plan and thinking some of those things through. Like, oh yeah, I guess I am going to have to go get my kids. Okay, well, when I get my kids, do I stay in their room or do I bring them back to? M- to our room. Is yeah. there egress through? Is your wife already of, calling 911? You know, does she know to already start calling 911 because you're right. the one who's going to go get the kids? It's a good See? idea to discuss this with your family and have a yep. plan, right? I mean, do you have a kind of a plan or an idea what you're going to do if your house catches on fire? Mm-hmm. You know, well, what if a bad guy breaks in? Um, yep. Also, know, like Adrian, you brought up, what is your line in the sand, so to speak, too? So you brought up the example where the the geography, if you will, uh, of where your kids' rooms are in relation to the stairs and where your guys' master bedroom is. Yeah. You said, you know, you may go to their room, which is closer to the stairs, tell them to go back to your guys' room, and uh, then you may stay at the top of the stairs. And your line in the sand is essentially nobody is getting upstairs. Yeah. You know, yep. that's that's where it is. And I brought up even at our old house, we lived in this tiny little house where you could stand in one spot right outside of our master bedroom and I could give you a tour of the entire upstairs. Uh-huh. And I, so I said, my line in the sand would have to literally be basically if you're in the house. Because if you stepped foot in the front door, you were th- four steps from our master bedroom. Um, you know, so it was like, it's different for different people. And Absolutely. Gotta, yeah. I think of that. Well, um, where's your position of advantage? For me, my best position of advantage is at the top of the stairs. So why would I give that up for a less... Uh, desirable position just so now somebody can make it through my house a little bit further, right? Right. They've had the warning. They've had plenty of opportunities to leave. This is my best position of advantage. I'm not going to leave this position. This is where I'm going to make my stand here. He's not coming up those stairs. You know, that's a good question to ask yourself, I guess. What's, you know, in my house, if something goes down, what's the my most likely best position of advantage? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the scenario before in your old house because – just the fact that you were thinking about it is already putting you ahead of the game. Like, mm. it, there's so many people that don't think about this stuff. They don't discuss this with their loved ones. And when it, you know, unfortunately, if it does happen, like, that's not the time to get creative. That's not the time <laughs> yeah. to come up with a plan. Like, yeah. right. you know, that it's, it's too late. Well, the, the thing that kickstarted me thinking about that at that house is I remember my wife got a shower caddy. For our shower at that house. Oh my! The way that it works, the way that it worked, and I, I hate that shower cat. Okay, anyway, um, our door went out into this very tiny hallway. Like I said, I mean, this house was miniature. Um, and basically, our door went out into the hallway, and it basically was six inches before you had an opening into the living room, which then the front door was right into the living room. So, like I said, four or five steps, and you're in our master bedroom from the front door. Anyway, in that little hallway, there was the bathroom, and then there was another bedroom across from, from our bedroom. Um, and she got this shower caddy, and one night at can I, 1 a.m. Can I guess, Jim, is this shower ca- caddy, is it held up by suction cups? Um, no, it's not. Oh, okay. I, well, I've got I a hate different, those two. Yeah. My, this one was, like, wedged between the ceiling and the bathtub yeah. or something like that. And basically, oh, okay. 
the bathtub that we had, the edge of it wasn't flat. It was kind of curved, and, you know, bathtubs are real shiny and slippery and all that. So anyway, at 1 a.m. or something, the whole thing comes tumbling down, <laughs> yep. and it was a clash of metal and banging and all this noise, and it filled the whole house, not that that was hard. And I remember that eyes, of course, just, boom, shoot open. Oh, my God, and, it's happening. And it's like, this is for real right now. Somebody, I, you know, and of course, when you first wake up, I couldn't tell if somebody had kicked in the door or if, like, the whole house was just falling down. Al-Qaeda itself is exactly. breaking into my house this I moment. mean, that's what it felt like. Yeah. It, uh, Pete was joking around about how you're much more likely to have the teenage kid come in and trying to steal your wallet than you are the team of ninjas coming in to assassinate you. I thought it was the team <laughs> of ninjas. So anyways... Well, see, I that's w- the thing. You'd never hear the ninjas. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. You would never you hear just, the ninjas. you just wake up dead. A you would just of, wake up dead. A team of heavy-footed <laughs> deaf ninjas. <laughs> so, of course, that's what I'm thinking. I wake up. At this point in time, I'm scrambling because I'd never thought about this before. What am I going to do? And of course, I'm like, the front door is basically right there. And the, my wife, the whole time, is, did you hear that? Did you? <laughs> what are we going to do? And I'm like, shh, just stop. Like, let me think. And, uh, and it was a, it was a mess. And then um, somehow, of course, like we didn't hear any noise after that. And then I managed to panic myself into being so tired that I fell back asleep, which is super <laughs> terrible. Don't even don't judge me for that. But I did fall back asleep, and then we woke up in the morning and found out there's a shower caddy. But after shampoo that, shampoo bottles everywhere. Oh, yeah, it was it was so bad. Anyway, after that though, I was every night I would fall asleep thinking about well if they came in this way and if they came in that way. But I I knew kind of I had a plan for if something happened that house. Yeah. Uh, you need to, yeah, you need to have some type of plan and, and yes, plans are going to go out the window when stuff starts happening, but the fact that you planned is going to give you uh, an advantage. Your, your brain doesn't know the difference between real life and, and, uh, when you're mentally rehearsing something. Okay. So playing that what if game is really important and it's not just in your house. Of course, it's when you're out, you know, day to day life, you know, if this happens, then I'm going to do this. What would I do if... X happened. Well, then I'm going to do Y and then Z. Okay. Mm -hmm. And thinking about that stuff, because then when it actually happens, you've already processed that. You've already made those decisions in your brain. So you're going to be able to move through those, uh, those uh, decision, that decision making tree a lot faster. And, And oftentimes, as much as we spend a lot of time and a lot of effort on the range to get people to draw faster, shoot faster, shoot more accurately, things like that. Um, the real time is going to be made up in your ability to detect and process and react to things. Right? Yeah. That's where mm-hmm. you're gonna that's where you're gonna get ahead in a fight. Yep. Absolutely. Also, uh those kind of shower caddies pretty much useless. I hate yeah. shower caddies. Same They're thing happened in my house. Yeah. It was a suction cup one came down yep. middle of the night, you know, waking up flashlight everywhere, you know, like <laughs> it's yeah, it's so loud and sudden it's yeah. Oh, I mean it's and it's Talk about like a startling adrenaline dump. Yes. like you mm-hmm. think the the world has is exploding. But do you think that's the time to come up with a plan? Nope. Absolutely not. Nope. 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 You have to have Bad something timing. in place. Yeah. Yeah. You guys ever had your door kicked in? No. No, I've uh, never had my house broken into. I've been fortunate. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty no. good. I I told the story here. earlier. Little people who have. You know, it, it's not home defense, but it's self defense. You know, the, the the reason I have I have flashlights all over. Like I have extra ones in my car. Um, you know, I was taking my family out east to visit family, and uh, we stopped in this suburb of Cleveland um, at a hotel room at you know halfway. I think I had to work that day. We got a late start, and you know we roll up in this place at two a.m. I stayed in the car with the kids. My wife went in to check in. She's coming back out, and. You know, it's it's like the car, me, my wife, hotel, and this gentleman kind of walks up to her and starts asking her questions at gentleman. 2 a.m. Yeah, a, you know. A it's fine like, young scholar. Hey, yeah, you know, like, oh, it, and it's always some long life story it that is. all your bad choices that led up to this one point. And, you know, hey, hey man, I... I I don't really care at 2 a.m. in a parking lot. Nothing good happens. And uh, I didn't have a flashlight handy. And, you know, we resolve the situation. We send him on his way. But, man, if I was ever in that situation again, the first thing I would do is light that guy up with a 1,000 lumens and just be like, go away, please. Mm-hmm. You know, 
Um, we're not interested. Right. Leave us alone. Please right. go away. And yep. here I am. You know, my wife's outside of the car. I'm in the car with the kids. Like, I really, really wish yeah. I had my light. With I, I don't that, know. How, that light yeah. sends, a, it it sends a pretty clear it message. Does. Yes. You guys said it. There's a time to be rude. Yes. Which is yeah. hard for people in the Midwest to know. I mean, if you're listening and you're out east, you're like, hell yeah, there is. <laughs> but, um, All hey, the time. I'm, hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's but the matter, you? If, uh, Eddie? If you're, in the, if you're in the Midwest, I know, and people joke around about Midwest, nice, 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 you never want to be rude, but... But there's there's all kinds of weird stuff and yeah this is getting into I mean I don't know I mean in the home defense situation that I brought up where I'm telling you some weird story you know as I'm coming right. at you with my hands up there's an example you know you just at that point you told me to kick rocks well, but and, I'll, and and also you know what maybe you're wrong but I'd rather be I guess wrong well, anytime anybody yeah. like, like and also it says like safe. it also yeah. says like if the guy or gal or whoever does have you know not good intentions but they're feeding you this line of BS. It's letting them know I'm not buying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anytime yeah. anybody like, brings don't up, don't go any further. I'm not buying it. Yeah. Any, right. Anytime anybody brings up something and they bring it up spontaneously, or they bring it up and cre and try creating an artificial sense of urgency, there's always a reason. It's always to feel a, as though if this yeah. is a distraction. Something else is happening. It's always this in a parking lot. A par it's yeah, always parking lot. Par parking lots just, you know, I, they bring out the the weird in people, or they bring yeah. out the weird people. <laughs> a little maybe bit of, that maybe yeah a little, a little column a column b yeah so yeah uh, it's, uh, it's often it's a distraction it's you know some yeah so it could be someone knocking at your door oh you know i'm hey i'm looking for my dog give it you know this and that like look man maybe you are but it's, it's the middle of the night now's not the time get yeah. lost like it, i i have been involved in countless yeah. situations can i come as, in i need i need to come in yeah i need to, I need to use your yeah phone. i need to use your phone exactly my car is broken down like i will call the police for you go away go wait in the yeah. street i will call the police right and and i don't know how many times I've, I've run into crime victims okay as a police officer where yeah they they feel bad they try to help somebody out that they don't know it's 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 they they were like oh I felt weird about it. Like, trust your gut. I felt yeah. weird. I knew something was wrong, but I, you know, I wanted to help the person. And now they wind up getting robbed or raped or whatever the case. Like, so you know, yeah. your 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 mind knows the situation's weird, and you re you have to. Society has told us that we have to always be polite and kind, and like you're trying to fight like millions of years of evolution. That that our brain has like, man, this isn't right. Don't go there. Don't do that. Don't talk to this person. And sometimes you have to listen to that and you have to trust your instincts. You know, how many some, times have you been watching a horror movie and you're like, don't go in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know, yep. but they do. They do. They just can't help it. Trust your gut. Oh, man. There's so many. I feel like there's so much more stuff, even that we went over today when we were in the shoot house. But if you're listening and this stuff just intrigues you, um, Definitely check out the video footage because uh, MC Ryan and our video guy Cooper were down there following us around, as you got to see. Uh, Mark and I dress up and uh, and go at each other with some of these training rounds, but we also did a little flashlight tag. And we just did some, some tactical movements, and uh, there was just a lot of really interesting points that that come up on the spot. And again, that just goes back to the fact that you can never say uh, to someone so much as when you're teaching somebody to shoot a pistol, right? There's kind of one... Just spare me with this when I say this. There's kind of like one way to teach someone how to shoot a pistol. You know I mean? Maybe yeah, there's subtle sure. tweaks, but at the end of the day, you there's there's a general form that you can teach a lot of people that works 99% of the time, and you want to put a round where you want the round to go. It's fairly straightforward. Marksmanship is marksmanship. Yeah. Yep. When it comes to this stuff, I mean, you're saying one thing here about, like, well, this situation, you know, this, 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 and then the next time another situation comes up, and, and none of the stuff that you talked about in the last situation even applied yeah. because it was just 100% different. So you, you can never actually just give... Here's the one podcast out there that will give you everything you need to know for your home defense <laughs> situation. That's just unfortunate. We just can't do that. So um, you'll get to see if you watch that video, you know, some of these situations that came up in our experience um, and just all the unique construction and ideas and, and tactics and thoughts that uh, came up right on the spot. So, so did it, what we did today, did it get you guys thinking about other things? So that, Every that's, single one of these episodes has got me thinking uh, yes. a I mean, lot. And about that's, that's our goal. 
That's yeah. our goal. We I want was you just to about to say the this. exact same thing. The biggest thing for me is I'm thinking about these things. And actually, when you think about it and you do a little bit of it, um, not only is it super helpful, but it gets you thinking more and more and more. And how do I build on that? Or what would I change about the last thing I did? So then you maybe do it again. And then you change that and just add and build and add yeah. and build. And yeah. definitely a lot of building to do for sure. But um, Yeah. It's better to know that you have stuff to work on than to just be ignorant and just for the time being blissfully unaware until you're unblissfully shocked into realizing you weren't ready. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, the more I do this stuff, the more I feel like I have to prepare. There's more things I have to work on to prepare. It's 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 weird like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Big thanks to you guys. Since, since this is the last podcast episode of this series, we uh, we get to sadly bid this one adieu, although I'm sure Mark and I are going to be doing a lot more training, a lot more uh, choking each other out and stuff, um, you know, for practice. Not It's not weird, <laughs> I swear. Um, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, a lot of judo chops, and I, I, I want to try and knock you we out. We can do it. All right. Um, anyway, but uh, there's this, this is... A never-ending thing, but as far as this pod adventure goes, we're going to cap it off with this. Thanks a ton to the you guys over at Vortex Edge. Um, by the time this releases, I think Vortex Edge will actually be like almost, I mean, I don't know. It's it's something to, uh, we, we're working on it. If, if it releases and we're there's excited. not like a website for it yet, just like stay tuned. And it'll be we'll a, figure that it's out. Coming. Tease for it's the coming. website. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and honestly, just thanks for being good students. I mean, seriously, that it 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 makes our job that much more easier when you come down and you're willing to learn and and, and try new things. Um, no, it was it was really fun. It was is watching you guys get better at stuff. You know, it, it, we we joke about that photo, but that that was the first time you shot a handgun. You know, and I mean, and it's 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 kind of nice. It's rewarding to see. You in that shoot house, you know, shoot Jimmy, you know, one handed now and, and see that that stuff pays off, you know, and it's 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 rewarding to see that, like, you're going to take all this stuff we did and you're really going to sit down and think about it. You know, I almost feel bad about getting you that second place hat over there, but. Second, maybe, you know, almost, second almost, almost, almost. Second place doesn't sound that bad <laughs> until you like go back and you're like, well, there was only two people. <laughs> if you're not and first, you know you're last. You that's know, right. that's really messed up because you were really shooting lights out all day. Hey, with that rifle, I'm you a were, gamer. You were shooting really, really well. <laughs> I'm a so. gamer. Are we talking about practice. Should have talking some, about. Pra- Jim is a gamer. Get some money on <laughs> you know, that next time. We're, we're talking <laughs> about hustling you. We're talking earlier about like, oh, you know, your shooting's not going to get better in a high stress scenario, <laughs> and I think that is true for like everybody but Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I put five shots right in the pump house, and I was, I was pretty amped up. <laughs> you could seriously see like this is in my shoulder. That's like <laughs> what was exposed, and you just like lit it up. I was we got to teach you to fall down a little faster. But. I was so sh- <laughs> I was about ready to just unload. But. I was I was watching and, and I'm like, okay, he's got him. And I'm hearing I'm hearing the rounds hit those canvas of those Carhartt yeah. jacks. I'm hearing that flop, yep. flop, and I'm like, <laughs> why isn't Mark doing anything? And this <laughs> flop, flop, and like he just gonna, keeps coming. He's gonna keep getting <laughs> shot. Yeah, I'm like, he better fall down. <laughs> he, was, he was playing out one of those heroin addicts. Of yeah, like, uh-huh. hyped up on like, stuff. Like, yeah. Next scenario though is like pop down. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's definitely what you should do, or you get end up getting hit in the. Finger like I did. I'll be bit. Uh, did. I'll be a better bad guy next time. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening. We appreciate it. Go back and watch the videos too if you haven't yet. There's a ton of good stuff in there. Um, so yeah, catch you next time. Yep. Thanks everybody. Cool. Bye. Bye. We did it. Sweet. Oh, awesome. Seriously, this one though, is that be was awesome. Cool. This whole pod Dude. venture was like super awesome. Awesome. What do yeah. you guys want to drop it or drop them or? Uh, wait, October in one month. Cool. Wow. Awesome, man. Very cool. So no, I, I, yeah, I think the timing's really going to be good too. Man, we started this in February. I right? know. Oh, a lot happened. Corona, man. Oh Jeez. man, a lot happened. Yeah, could you give you a thought? I mean, you know that starting this in February that we'd have our like first episode. Half the we didn't even rioting. We didn't and, even know. And, just, and it just kind of yeah. naturally. Okay, all right, we'll get the Sims out, and I'm so glad we did because yeah. that just brought that up a good. whole other it was, things. It was amazing. And put you in a scenario, and you know. We kind of talked up the UTM rounds a little bit. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm glad we got you into that. It's it's a little bit of stress inoculation. I mean, yeah. when it happens for real, man, it's it's going to be way worse. But, like, we have to expose you yeah. to that stress. Yeah. You know. God, at last, 
one, <laughs> dude, your first shot was in my finger, and your <laughs> second shot was in my knee. <laughs> and, and I was like, I, I'm started, sure it was on purpose. I started going to the ground, and I was like, I was like, mother Son of God, bitch. just stop. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of them hit me in the Carhartt jacket, which like you can't even feel. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, I hit the ground, and I was like, just stop, just stop. <laughs> yep. Call, oh, we I were. I call that move the high low, Jim. Yeah. No, it was it was cool putting you guys in that situation. Yeah. And, you know, at the same time, like we had fun, but like I didn't feel like we were playing paintball. All right, that'll wrap it up for this episode of the Vortex Nation podcast. Thanks everybody for listening. Hit that subscribe button so you can always stay up to date on the latest happenings over here at the Vortex Nation podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram at Vortex Nation podcast. Again, everybody, thanks and happy hunting and shooting. We appreciate it. Have a good one.